Portfolio Builder members, this is our May 29th update video near the close of the market. There are no actions to take in our portfolios. We're sitting pretty. This is our basic level program that trades a SPY ETF with covered calls. Today's trade alert, we covered the 281.50, which we collected a credit of 287 and paid back four cents today for a 98% profit. The new trade alert was to add more downside protection by selling an in-the-money covered call. We'll review what all this means in a little bit, but it is sitting pretty. We sold the 275 strike expiring May 31st for a credit of 422. So I'll pop back to this portfolio in a minute, uh, but it is sitting pretty. Now this portfolio does have a 5% position initially in cryptocurrencies, which is the maximum allocation we recommend. This portion of the portfolio <clears throat> has a very large profit of 77% launched at the same date as the core of the portfolio. So while we have half a million trading in the SPY ETF very conservatively, we're using a 5% position to hedge against currency risks, which currently is being driven by the Chinese and the U.S. trade war. So this portfolio, we will look to take profits on soon, but it has a 50% recommended allocation to Bitcoin, 29% at Ethereum, 12% with Litecoin, and 7% with Bitcoin Cash. Now, if you are a little bit more advanced, the other coins we would recommend a uh, position similar to the size of your Bitcoin Cash would be Monero, Tron, Ripple, and EOS. So uh, that would be around $400 to $500 in each of those coins, and you would take that out of your Bitcoin position. Otherwise, I would stick to these big four. The time to sell these for profits will be the minute the U.S. trade war begins to de-escalate and... At that point, we'll likely go all to cash and have a small short position on Bitcoin. So we'll see when that happens. Uh, but again, I wouldn't have more than 5% of my portfolio in crypto. We've been pushing this all year back when it was in the 3500 range. Now it's at 8600. So people are now wanting to jump on the bandwagon, but we're already uh, almost up double. So be careful. The minute the U.S. trade war does de-escalate, I would expect a huge sell-off in cryptocurrencies. Now, the good news for crypto fans is that may not be anytime soon. This is our high-yield program. This is only traded on Tuesdays. It's a little more passive. If we look at what the SPY ETF actually purchases for you, these are the core positions. So it has 300 shares of Microsoft, 100 in Apple, Facebook, Intel, Cisco, 200 at Comcast, 900 in Bank of America, 500 at Wells Fargo. And again, we're selling in the money covered calls right now to generate income with downside protection. And so we're protected to the level of each of these strikes. Microsoft, we're down $2, but we collected uh, $2 credit. So we're really uh, even on that. If the market does rebound between now and Tuesday, this will work out perfectly. Apple, we're protected to 170, and it's currently traded at 177, so we're on track for the maximum potential return on that trade. Facebook has a $5 cushion, Intel a $1 cushion. Uh, Cisco is trading slightly lower, but we sold the out-of-the-money covered call on this, so we're actually doing very well uh, as long as Cisco remains in this area. Comcast, we were also bullish selling the 43 strike. Uh, so that one is still sitting well. And the banks are hovering right around the price we sold our covered call at. So those are performing very well. This portfolio aims to get about 2% a month, while our basic portfolio aims to get closer to 1% a month. To build the high yield program, you do need a $150,000 portfolio. The basic portfolio can be built with as little as 30000 and that's because you only need to own 100 shares of the SPY to be able to follow this strategy. Now, the key difference in our program versus any other equity holding strategy is that we only buy the equities if we write the covered call. The covered call protects us to the downside and still allows us to generate a profit. 
Now, if you have a seven-figure portfolio, you'll be very interested in our whale program, which trades on Thursdays only. It's been trading the TLT exclusively and has managed to create a very large return since uh, launching all of these in the Christmas massacre. 12-12 is when uh, all of these launched the week of that big crash in equities. So all of these three portfolios have had to withstand sharp moves to the downside and sharp rebounds to the upside from the equities market. This one has been trading the TLT on Thursdays, selling covered calls to help reduce volatility in the underlying asset and generate extra profits. And so this one will eventually sell its TLT, go to a cash position, and then look for the opportunity to build the equities portfolio, but only after a large crash. And so we're actually timing this based on the VIX getting to around a 30 level. So if we look at the Christmas crash, uh, it did breach the 30 VIX. So that'll be our signal for when to jump into these equities and then start selling deep in the money covered calls. And what's brilliant about the in the money covered call is if the market goes up, we win. If the market goes flat, we win. And if it continues to go down, as long as it doesn't trade below our strike, we write our covered call, we also win. This sets up a great high probability opportunity when volatility is elevated. Now, if you've been losing money over the past month, you're not alone. Most investors are. Our strategy is actually making a higher return than normal. And again, our goal is typically to return 1% a month in our basic program and on a good month to hit 2%. But most importantly, we hate to lose money. So on a very bad day, we will have a tiny loss relative to the market. But immediately after those periods, because the VIX spikes, the cost of options skyrocket. And it makes our strategy very, very lucrative. What I'd like to do now is take a look at some of the important indicators, articles, and pieces of news I've been following today and over the past several days. So the South Korean KOSPI is a good leading indicator for the stock market headed straight down. Uh, when we see oil get too expensive or too cheap, that can be an alarm bell. And right now, oil is selling off. Uh, the central banks have been loading up on gold for quite some time. Uh, but despite this volatility in the market, it's still trading flat. And this is next to Bitcoin nearly doubling. So we're definitely keeping a close eye on gold relative to cryptocurrencies. This is probably the most important chart in the world right now. And this is the conversion rate of the dollar against the Chinese yuan. And this is the offshore conversion rate. They have an onshore and an offshore. They're usually pretty close. Uh, but this is essentially causing the big push in purchases for Bitcoin. The rich Chinese are seeing the value of their currency lose value relative to the dollar. And the reason China is doing this is to make the products cheaper for American uh, importers to purchase. So now that these importers in America have to pay 25% tax to the government on all imports, or at least on at least half of all imports currently, uh, to offset that cost, the Chinese are making their conversion rate against the dollar cheaper. So this is a good way uh, in some respects to fight back against tariffs, but it's really bad for all the people who have any savings in China. So they are dumping their local currency, uh, sometimes illegally, and trying to get into safer assets. Uh, so that's definitely something we're watching carefully. And as long as this continues to go higher, I would ex expect the cryptocurrency market to continue marching higher as well. The bond market is spelling out trouble for global growth. We now have negative rates in Germany and Japan. Australia is at 1.4, Hong Kong 1.6, UK at 0.8. The only place you can actually make a return on treasury bond right now, uh, at least in the major economies, is the US. 10 years at 2.2, 30 years at 2.6. So this is a move we've been predicting. 
and that our whale club has been taking advantage of. Uh, but at some point, this could all snap and reverse quickly. So we're getting very anxious to, uh, to actually get out of the way of a potential sell-off in the bond market. Um, but as long as the stock market is crashing and there's nowhere else to invest your money, uh, this looks like this trend could continue even longer. And so here's the chart. Again, the lower the yield goes, the higher the TLT travels up. Meanwhile, the big fight, the first shot fired, uh, potentially this will be the start of World War III, and this is what they'll look back as the first shot fired. America is trying to bankrupt Huawei, a Chinese company that's been stealing uh, products from Cisco and everyone else under the sun uh, for the past three decades. And they went from uh, somewhat of a laughing stock to now generating $100 billion a year. Meanwhile, prices for their equipment is dropping on places like eBay and other resellers as Google has now announced that they will ban Huawei's hardware uh, from using the Android operating system. So now Huawei is scrambling to develop their own operating system which could set them back massively. Uh, so this is a huge, huge blow to China and potentially one that could uh, bankrupt their national champion telecommunication company. And so this company is like if you took Intel, Cisco, and Apple and combined them into one giant, uh, that's what Huawei represents for China. Uh, meanwhile, just a, something I do look at is the appetite for IPOs as a indicator for the health of the longevity of the stock market and the cycle. Beyond Meat continues to climb higher and higher. This is the pea protein hamburger patty. Uh, so this is one of the few IPOs that is doing well. And even in today's crash, it is up. Look at the emerging markets and gold sector all trading relatively flat, which is somewhat surprising considering the American markets had a 2% pullback uh, from yesterday's high to today's low. These are the stocks in our high yield program with a quick snapshot of the return today. Again, we're covered very well on these positions. And so next Tuesday, we will buy back our covered calls and write a new one. So we should generate a very nice profit uh, as long as we uh, stay in this area or travel higher. Uh, now, in that program, our biggest concern is Apple. So we currently have a put option on Apple, an out of the money put option. So that is our big hedge for the high yield program. And in the basic program, we're doing it with a put option on the SPY. Now our whale portfolio has been writing the TLT exclusively all year, but it is looking for the time to go to cash and then wait for a VIX over 30 to rotate into these core companies. The reason you do need a seven figure portfolio for our whale program is because you're gonna need around $100,000 to $200,000 per equity to have a well-balanced portfolio when you trade Google and Amazon because they come in at $1,100 and $1,800. Now, do consider the prices will be uh, much cheaper whenever we do rotate into these equities because the VIX will have spiked to 30 and this will represent a big decline in these companies. So we'll be getting them at bargain prices when the rest of the world is absolutely panicking. Uh, and again, the only reason we would do that is because we're gonna jump in and sell deep in the money covered calls so that we have a high probability trade uh, while option premium is extremely expensive. Here's a list of stocks that I've identified as trade war stocks, mostly uh, chip processing companies, but also hardware related to telecommunications, phone companies, um, Apple, and also the service AT&T and Sprint, something we wanna keep a close eye on. Now, this is interesting. Uh, a lot of people are worried that China is going to ban the rare earth metals. And so the only place people can find to invest in that is this REMX, Rare, e rare Earth Strategic Metals ETF. I've looked at what's held in that. And the problem is, it holds almost exclusively Chinese and Australian companies. And if you go 
look at the details, well, China's going to ban sales of its rare earths to America. So that's going to dramatically hurt its profit margins in that sector. So that doesn't make sense. What would make sense would be buying uh, U.S. mining companies who are positioned to mine rare earth minerals. And so if you look into the story of this, there really is not a lot of good opportunity in this sector. There's some obscure OTC stocks, but I really don't see a good way to play this. There's one American company. I'll pull up a chart. So the third largest or fourth largest position is an American company, Tronix, T-R-O-X. This is the only company that could potentially benefit from rare earth metals uh, being banned. That is a position in the REMX. Uh, but in general, the rest of those are uh, Chinese companies. So they're going to get beat up if the Chinese do halt selling uh, those rare earth metals. And, and these are being used to create super hyperic magnets amongst other things, but very important for uh, the electronics industry in general. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Deutsche Bank traveling to the sixth level could be a big warning sign. It's already at 689. That's a big German bank. Think back to Lehman Brothers. Uh, if that bank were to go down, it could have systematic uh, shock to the credit markets around the world. And uh, it's been crashing for a long time. The negative rates in Europe have made it very hard for this bank to generate a profit. And so it's one of the biggest losers in terms of market cap total value over the past uh, several years now. And again, Beyond Meat up 6.5% during all this volatility. Very crazy. Uber IPO'd at 45. It's hanging in there at 39. That's not that bad. This is um, a big company, one of the largest private companies to go public. And so it's a very good uh, eye on the market or canary in the gold mine per se. Okay, we're looking at the Bitcoin now, cryptocurrencies. A friend of mine asked if how much money would be safe to buy Ripple. I'd be very cautious to buy too much of Ripple Look at the market cap. Bitcoin has $154 billion market cap. Well, guess what? Just the buying orders at the 275 strike on the SPY right now, just sitting there ready to buy the SPY, is bigger than the entire market cap of Bitcoin. And when we look at the gold market sitting around uh, some 8 to $10 trillion value, uh, we can get a feel for just how tiny the Bitcoin market cap really is. So the bottom line is that while you might make a lot of money with cryptocurrencies, how much can you afford to lose? Because these are so easy for a big player to come in and swing the market in either direction. So if Bitcoin is just a tiny, tiny dot in the ecosystem of finance, then Ripple is a speck. And so uh, the chances of Ripple getting demolished in terms of its value in a short period of time are probably about 10 times higher than that of Bitcoin just by its market cap. Uh, so that's the reason behind our allocations in the cryptocurrencies to bet big on the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. I also like that we can buy these at the Robinhood app because it has free trading. They insure your capital up to half a million dollars and they also um, can trade our entire spy strategy commission free. So this is a very good broker. The platform is super easy to use uh, and they pay for everything. This is the fastest growing broker dealer in the world. So right now our cryptocurrency recommendations are to sell all coins except for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Cash, Litecoin, which you can hold in Robinhood. You don't need to safely store your Bitcoin offline in a hard wallet. This market is too small and too volatile. Our goal will be to call a top, take profits, and then wait for a big crash to buy back in. Uh, let's just face it, this is not going to be a means of trading uh, for your normal goods anytime soon. It's a very speculative market that has a long way to develop. Here's a look at the SPY ETF. Uh, so if you are down, so is everybody else. Our strategy has done very well. We've actually generated a higher profit than normal because of volatility going up. That makes options more expensive. It allows us to be in a situation where we can make money if the market goes up, flat, or down. Here's the TLT. This is what our whale club's been trading. And 
Uh, money continues to get scared into the bond market. Jim Cramer, always fear an up opening, never fear a down opening. He says he will probably regret this tweet in the next week or two. And then he wrote, or today, Bank of China panics, floods the market with liquidity. Uh, one of their big banks is nearing bankruptcy, so the state took it over and is warning its creditors. And so the big story here is that China is trying to build a huge trade route uh, through Eurasia. And to do so, it has lent a tremendous, what the IMF has a giant 50-page report you can read. Uh, but they're estimating around $45 trillion worth of loans to these developing countries surrounding them. And so this move by the U.S. could very likely bankrupt them uh, as they took on too much debt uh, and set their ambitions too high. Uh, but on the flip side of the coin, the Chinese are very cutthroat. And if President Xi were to just give in to all the American demands, he would lose his spot as the lifetime president of China. So I do believe this will escalate and cause more pain for both sides before a deal is created. Uh, now people are starting to speculate that the Fed will continue to hold rates low or even lower them due to how chaotic uh, President Trump has been in terms of creating chaos around the world. Pompeo was on Fox Business today talking about the severe risks of China stealing not only technology from tech companies, but also from the military. And so this is well-documented thing that's been going on for decades. And our entire supply chain for much of what Americans enjoy is tied to China. So this will be a very, very rough escalation for both parties. U.S. crackdown on Chinese companies, including Huawei, is no longer like a trade war. The U.S. is shifting from protecting its interests to destroying China. It increasingly resembles air-striking Chinese high-tech companies. China is mulling qualitative change in countermeasures. Most likely why we have the big sell-off today. Step one, sell all U.S. equities. Huawei has filed a motion for summary judgment in its lawsuit against the U.S. government, which asked to declare the 2019 National Defense Authorization Act unconstitutional. In the news today, Mueller says, well, depending on which coin, uh, not enough info to say he didn't do a crime, but not enough info to say he did, is basically uh, the summary of that. $10 trillion in negative bonds out in the market now. And this has never happened before. Meanwhile, Vietnam is doing really well from the tariffs. Now to get around the tariffs, products are shipping through Vietnam and then back out. One of the biggest companies that could be affected from this is Apple. Uh, not only do they have around 25% of their sales in China, they have their whole supply chain there. Other companies that may be impacted are Nike, Marriott, Disney, and other companies with heavy exposure to China. Here's a Bloomberg quote, China shouldn't weaken the yuan or offload its treasuries as neither would boost its bargaining power with the US. Hao Zhu writes for the SCMP, devaluation could cause financial market chaos. Well, this is already happening and the currency might go into an uncontrolled free fall, uh, which is why they're buying Bitcoin. Selling American debt would prompt the dollar to drop against the renminbi Trump's desired outcome. Here is a quote. China is seriously considering restricting rare earth exports to the U.S. and may add other countermeasures. So these rare earths aren't that rare. They just are very hazardous to the environment. So that's why we've been happy to let the Chinese have their slave population, mine them out of the ground, uh, even using child labor for dollars an hour. Um, so we'll see. This can be replaced, but right now the Chinese have put everyone else out of business who would mine these because they've made the prices so low. Now, I have looked for opportunities to play this, and there uh, are currently not any very good options to find an American mining company that uh, is big enough to put a bet on.
but it is a good signal uh, that if this were used in the trade war that we should look out for more downside ahead. And global yield curve inversion around the world occurring simultaneously right now. Chinese military ditching Microsoft Windows, no surprise. Now the Chinese companies have been hit quick and hard. Uh, Alibaba, one of them, and now they're looking to raise $20 billion while they still can. Meanwhile, Amazon's making moves to raise the bar on who can be a seller in their marketplace, as well as going for same-day deliveries. This will put more pressure on retail, and currently they already own 50% of all online purchases, which is estimated to be $317 billion this year. And again, this is a great company held in the SPY ETF if you follow our basic program. And if you're doing our whale club, you can actually isolate and concentrate your portfolio into this company. Of course, it's trading around 1800 so it is for big players only. Here's a little list of the rare earth metals if you want to pause it and zoom in on it. Dallas Fed Manufacturing turning negative. All of this is due to the trade war escalating. And meanwhile, the U.S. dollar currency index is at a high of the year, trading at 98.13. So this continues to illustrate that the dollar remains the safest island in the ocean alongside U.S. treasuries and still U.S. equities, although they are seeing the pain today. Here's a look at the federal funds rate and the big question is do we drop back down to zero go to negative rates or are we going to be entering a period of rising rates the best indicator to predict rising rates would be rising inflation uh, so we're keeping a close eye on that still printing very low however tariffs could potentially cause massive price increases on just about everything so would that cripple demand or would prices just rise? And if so, would that push the Fed to raise rates? And so that's a wrap for today's trade alert. Tomorrow is our Whale Club update. Most of you are likely assigned on the TLT for the baked into the cake profit of $22 a contract. We will make a decision tomorrow as to what to do with the cash pile we'll be sitting on. Uh, Friday, we have another trade alert for our basic program. And if we get anywhere near the 275 SPY, look for a emergency alert tomorrow. That means we'll take a huge profit on today's covered call and sell a new one, pushing the strike price lower, giving us more protection. So if you have a active trial or an expired trial, it's a portfolio builder, call Dean. Upgrade, activate your account, get the trades real time. You can save you $100 over the phone. I promise you, you've lost more money this month than our entire product will cost you for the rest of your life. Call Dean, 505-322-7515. We have a package that fits for everyone, and we're here to help you. And what I can promise you is two things. One, you'll see instant results. We're trading almost every day. The trades take less than two minutes, so they're very easy to follow. Two, You'll be able to sleep much better at night because you'll have lots of downside protection at all times. So if you hate to lose money and you don't mind just picking up small profits over and over and over again, please call Dean, 505-322-7515. We can set you up with some free coaching calls to teach you how to do the covered call if you're new to options. And once we get you going, you'll see just how easy this is.